With a long career dedicated to public service and a deep commitment to improving education and social issues, County Executive Rashern Baker has been an active member of our community for over 23 years. Join us as he shares personal stories about his family, his career accomplishments, and his vision for Prince George's County. This is Conversations with Dr. Charlene Dukes, President of Prince George's Community College. As the County Executive of Prince George's County, Maryland, Rushern Baker works closely with state and regional leaders to create jobs, grow the local economy, and improve public safety and education in the county. He has implemented many innovative programs and reforms designed to improve the quality of life for residents. An accomplished lawyer, a well-respected administrator, and a devoted family man, Baker continues to raise the profile of Prince George's County through his leadership. Welcome County Executive Baker to the program. You've always been a huge friend and supporter of Prince George's Community College. It's a pleasure to be able to sit down and talk with you about your life and your vision for the county. So let's get started. How are you today? I'm doing good, Dr. Deese. It's, it's a pleasure to be here as always. Well, thank you. You know, we know and you talk about it a lot that you're from a small town in Georgia and you've lived many places around the world. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, your military upbringing, and what it was like to grow up in a military family? You know, first of all, it was very interesting. Um, I was born, as you said, in, in a small town, Valdosta, Georgia. So I'm always surprised when people know exactly where that is. <laughs> Um, but then because my dad did 30 years in the military, I lived all around. Um, we lived in the States, Fort Bragg, uh, Fort, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, I went to uh, middle school in Okinawa, Japan. I went to high school in Beverly, Massachusetts and Springfield, Massachusetts. So I tease my kids and I tell them that, you know, I went to uh, seven different <laughs> elementary schools, a, high, a junior high and a middle school and two different high schools. But it was a great life and it was a great learning experience because, and it's helped me in the current job that I have because you learn to adapt and you learn yes. to get along with different people and different cultures. When we were overseas for about four years, uh, almost four years in Okinawa, um, when we first moved there, we actually lived off base. So I lived in an Okinawan village. Um, and then, uh, so you learn that culture as a teenager and dealing with people in different religions, different folks. Um, and that's helped me as, a, as an administrator, as county executive, and as a person. So I assume that you learned some of the language, and do you, <laughs> do you carry that with you today? I do not. I do not. I, you know what? It's, it's interesting. My sister and my brother, my younger brother, actually learned Japanese, but my older brother and I didn't. It's also interesting. My wife grew up in a military family. Her father did 30 years in the military, and she actually started school in a French school. She was born in Germany and started school in a French school, so she still has a little bit of the French. Oh, well, that's good to know. But you, you, what brought you to the Washington, D.C. area? You know, it's interesting. I had never visited Washington, D.C., um, but, and I'm sure we'll get into it later, why I went into public service. Um, and when I decided I wanted to do something in public service, you know, Washington, D.C. seemed a natural mm -hmm. because this is where Congress is. And, and at that time, being very naive, this is where the laws are made. <laughs> and so I came here to go to Howard University and never thought I would stay. And, um, you know, got married and ended up staying here. Well, what would you say about yourself? We know that, that you went to Howard University uh, as an undergraduate and to law school as That's well. Right. What would you say about yourself as an academic? <laughs> um, not much. I tell my <laughs> <laughs> I always use my wife as a role model for my kids. But I will say this. I mean, it's 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 an interesting thing when you grow up in mil on military bases or grow up in uh, in Massachusetts like I did, where the African American population is very small. Mm -hmm. It's about ten percent. Um, you know, you don't really see people who are lawyers, doctors, and, you know, scholars who are African American. So role models um, uh, of that type were not in large abundance. When I came to Howard, you know, all the things I thought I wanted to do in, in college and the good times I wanted to have, 
what transformed me was really meeting people like Rayford Logan, who was a, uh, a historian, and, and Chancellor Williams, and Michael Winston, and these giants of history that I'd only read about as a child. And that inspired me really to get more into studying and understanding and wanted to be a lawyer. At, when I went to Howard as an undergraduate and I met people who were in law mm -hmm. school, I knew right then I could go to law school. <laughs> it never occurred to me before that I could actually do it. Well, you know, that's, it's interesting that you say that because one of the things we know today is that mm -hmm. young African-American males continue to be underrepresented mm -hmm. in higher education. Right. So as you think about um, your career and your journey through mm -hmm. that educational sort of spectrum, what would you say that would help young men stay the course? You know, it's interesting. I talk about this a lot, and, and it's, it's actually why I got into public service. And that is, I, and I'm very honest about the story. I mean, I was not a good student. Um, I stayed behind the first and second grade, which made life difficult for me when you're moving around every year and you're older than your peers. Um, and especially, you know, kids can be mean sometimes. Right. And uh, I got in a lot of trouble, and I got kicked out of a lot of schools. I, yeah, I tell my kids that I got kicked out of schools in the United States and schools <laughs> overseas. But when I came back to the States, um, it was understanding that I had loving parents and teachers who inspired me and who wanted me to do better uh, that really gave me the understanding that maybe I could do this thing, you know, in terms of uh, getting an education and going to college um, and being a lawyer, even though nothing in my background would have said, you know, that could happen um, in terms of my academics. But it was, so what I say to people is, you know, there's hope out there, and there, if you work hard and you find something you really believe in and want to do, find your passion, and that will, uh, that will carry you through. And then so, you know, here at Prince George's Community College, we have a diverse male student initiative where we are really working with uh, young men of color, yeah. uh, predominantly African American and Hispanic Latina, to really understand too that that whole notion of ten tenacity, uh, perseverance, right. focus, and motivation certainly will work and can pay off, particularly as we continue to talk with our uh, county executive here in Prince George's County. So what I would say to you as we are moving that we're going to take a short break, but when we return, we'll continue our discussion and our conversation with Rusherne Baker, the county executive. Please stay with us. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change a whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We're back with Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker. We're going to talk a little bit about your family and your career. So why don't we start? We know that you are um, certainly a devoted husband, a father of three, and that you and your wife have really a special relationship. So let's talk about how you met. <laughs> I actually met my wife the first day uh, at Howard University. And I was walking into the dorm. It was a new dorm they had opened up at Howard University. And my wife, um, was standing there talking to the, the gentleman at the desk 
And I could only thing I could remember was that she was the most impeccably dressed person I'd ever seen for that early in the morning in my entire life. And we actually became friends. And so we really didn't start dating until after I graduated. I graduated before she did. Uh, but just one of the smartest, brightest people, um, a Delta, as, as you know, and was, was president of the chapter at Howard University. But somebody who always has been an inspiration to me then and um, as I'm fond of saying, she helped raise me as an adult <laughs> and, uh, and just a special person and helped raise, you know, our great uh, three children. Um, our son, who is uh, Rashurn Baker IV, who's running for office, uh, so we're very proud of him. He's a, an artist, and uh, uh, he's running for the House of Delegates, and the middle child is at St. Mary's College, and right. the youngest at Cooper Union, where my son went in New York, who's also going to be an artist. Right. So we're very pleased with all the work that they're doing. Great, so we have something in common. My son is in film school, graduate school, oh. uh, out in California. So uh, what I'm telling him, and I know that you're telling to all of yours, <laughs> that they will do great things and bring some of that home. That's right, <laughs> that's right. So, so tell me, how long have, have you and Mrs. Baker been married? Uh, we have been married going on 27 years. A long, a long time. It, see, it, it seems like just yesterday, but yes, mm -hmm. um, you know, so we've been married a long time. And as you know, my wife has early onset of dementia. Um, and so we've had challenges with our family, mm -hmm. but we're so blessed. Um, we're, we're blessed to have, you know, um, so much support from family um, that every day is a good day when, you know, when I see her when I wake up in the morning. So we, we're just, she is just a great uh, uh, life partner. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been able to really, with the help of, of family and, and friends, and, and certainly those include her sorority sisters, you've yes. been able to balance that. Uh, your life as, as a husband, and then certainly your life as the um, top uh, executive here in Prince George's County. Has that been difficult in any way? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has. I mean, um, you know, yesterday, the, this, during the month of October was Alzheimer's Awareness, and we raised money uh, for Alzheimer's. Um, but when I first became county executive, our 15-year-old, my youngest child, was the one who actually watched my wife and took care of her and made sure she ate and those things for two years while I was getting used to this job. But we had the support of her sorority sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, the Deltas were great. They surrounded her. Every time I needed help, they would come in. And so it made me have to adjust to issues in, in my job and in my life. And that is, you know, there are days she has good days and there are days she has bad days. Um, so it makes it difficult, but you learn to adjust. And what I call, what I tell the children, it's um, every day is our new normal. Mm -hmm. And so we just take it one day at a time. And, um, but we're blessed. We're right. blessed. Well, I know that they are lucky to have you, and you certainly are lucky to have her. I uh, am. Th great. So uh, is there any advice you would give families for dealing with family members who have Alzheimer's? Yeah. I, I think that one of the first things, and it was helpful to us, was to get help. To not be afraid, one, to let people know what you're going through. Um, if I would, could do anything over again, it would be to have let folks know before the symptoms started showing that we knew she had early onset. Um, I actually ended up letting people know because the children wanted people to know what their mother was going through and what we were going through. So there's help out there if you let folks know. Don't be afraid to ask for that help. Uh, there's organizations like the Alzheimer's Awareness, African American Alzheimer's Association that have great information. And so that's what I would say to, to people and cherish each moment. Yes, well, thank you for that. And you. you know, you talked a lot about public service and I mm -hmm. know that some of the work that's done with the Alzheimer's Association is really about public service. Yes. But what we wanna do is turn back to your career. What led you to this life in, in public service and who's been the, the biggest influencer on you moving in right. that direction? Uh, the biggest influence is easy, it was my dad. Um, as I said, I was not a great student when I was uh, coming through. And when we came back to the States, I really didn't know what I was gonna do with my life other than play football <laughs> and maybe go into the Army. <laughs> you know, it was a typical 17-year-old life, you know. Um, but I, when we came back to the States and I saw a lot of my relatives who were in Springfield, Massachusetts and who were having troubles with the law and been in and out of jail. And I looked at them and I looked at myself and I said, you know, they, they were much smarter students in, than I was. The only difference between them and me, uh, quite honestly, was my parents. 
My parents never gave up on me. They believed in me, especially my father. He, even though all the statistics would tell you I wasn't going anywhere near a college, <laughs> he knew right away and he started preparing for me to go to college. Um, and at 17, I just, you know, I felt, you know, I read a book. I read Black Boy. And that changed yes. my, and opened my mind, and opened my eyes, and I said, gosh, you know, what I'm going through is unusual in terms of people undergirding you and picking you up. That's not the typical story of African Americans, especially African American males. And it made me feel guilty. And so my dad and I were watching a political uh, campaign, and I was complaining about the guy running, <laughs> and how he didn't do anything, and how the city looked the same for 20 years he'd been in there. And my dad turned to me and he said, if you think you can do better, you should run for office. And at 17, you know, knowing everything, I said to him, that's what I'm going to do. Wow, that's really <laughs> interesting. So um, just in, in a short period of time, maybe about 30 seconds or so, what do you believe to be your greatest career achievement? And then we'll certainly come back and talk about that a little more. I think uh, bar none is the re restructuring of the education system here in Prince George's County to give our, our children a chance to really achieve. Well, you know what we're going to do? Uh, we're going to take a short break right now, uh, but stay with us as we discuss the county executive's vision for Prince George's County. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams? Here! Michael Adams? Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So I've come up with a family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Prince George's Community College has prepared me to transfer to a four-year university from its rigorous academics and the experiences I've had here on campus. Enroll today at pgcc.edu. Prince George's Community College, transforming lives. We're back with Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker. And as we were talking, you, you mm -hmm. talked about one of your greatest accomplishments being with education here in right. Prince George's County. So why don't we talk about what your vision is for education? Well, I'd really like to see the, the school system move up. You know, I think there's no reason, and I know you feel the same way, uh, that Prince George's County can't be one of the best school mm -hmm. systems in the state and in the nation. And in order to do that, I wanted more responsibility at the executive level. You know, I often tell people that, you know, I have, I have the budget, so I can give the school whatever they want. But once I give them the budget, I could actually say to voters, I fully um, funded education and I did everything I could to improve it. But there's no responsibility for me making sure that people's children are educated. And that's a very important thing. This new structure that we have uh, allows me to pick the superintendent, uh, pick the uh, uh, leadership of the school board, and it really makes the county executive more responsible. Now, it's more authority and more responsibility than any other executive in the state has, mm -hmm. but it means now I have to make sure that our, P our children in Prince George's County are getting a quality education. I think with this new structure and working together, the community college has been a great partner with us. Um, you have always uh, uh, been a great partner around education, and now the county executive office is fully vested into our education system. To me, that's important. And if I could just add a little Please. bit, it goes into a big piece of what our initiative for the Baker administration is, and that's our Transforming Neighborhoods yes. Initiative, where we've actually taken six areas in Prince George's County where all the indicators were going in the wrong direction, 
educational dropout, um, uh, health disparities, lack of job opportunities, lack of transportation. We're working on all of those areas and now we can add education to that because we have a greater role in it. And that's what you're going to see as we talk about the things that are happening in Prince George's County under this administration. They all tie back to improving those six areas which then will improve the county as a whole. So are there particular metrics that you're looking for and have you given yourself a timeline for the accomplishment or the achievement of those metrics? I, I have. It's funny. My timeline and the timeline of, of my staff are different. Mine is yesterday and theirs is <laughs> more realistic. Uh, but there is. We measure, you know, we look at crime data. And one of the things we're proudest about is the fact that in each one of those six areas I'm talking about, uh, since a year and a half that we've implemented Transforming Neighborhoods, uh, every area of, of crime in Prince George's County has gone down. We've also seen an improvement in health disparity in those areas. And now with the new regional health care facility coming on board that we're going to build in the county, we're going to be able to improve that even more. Um, now with our inclusion of education, we're going to be able to partner with the community college in more than what we've done in the past with uh, students coming from those areas to improve it. And we've also looked at each one of those six areas abuts a metro station. So when the president and the nation talks about uh, transit-oriented development, we can actually do it in some of our most challenging areas in Prince George's County and therefore change the lives and change those communities. Well, you know, as you, you, you mentioned the, the new hospital. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. What, what are the expectations? Uh, when when what, might we see a shovel in the ground? And what will we, we expect to see once that construction is completed? Well, we certainly hope to see a uh, shovel in the ground in uh, 2014 before <laughs> June of next year. <laughs> I think that will happen. And what it will enable us to do, and there's a program right here at the community college, our middle college program. Yeah. Uh, where our students are here uh, getting a high school diploma and a, and a degree from the community college, but they can go into the health science fields. So now we're going to have a regional health care facility, not just a hospital, but a regional health care facility in Prince George's County that's going to have economic development and health related opportunities. And I think for us, it will have, it will provide quality access to health care, but also job opportunities and career development. And so we're excited about the things that are going to happen. And the location, again, I know has been selected. It, it's been selected. It's going to be at the uh, Largo uh, Metro site. So right there, transit oriented development, right near the um, Capitol Boulevard, where we're going to be able to transform that uh, shopping area into a destination point in Prince George's County, which will, as you see the theme in, our, in this administration, is having places where people want to go from the outside and spend money and spend time in Prince George's County. And so and what we know is that the expectation is that businesses will certainly uh, uh, right. exist around this yes. regional health care center right. that uh, will be bringing business in, will be providing jobs, and we'll also be looking at how we grow small businesses yeah, in Prince George's it, County. It's just a tremendous opportunity as you know. I mean you will see the business health related industry uh, grow up around the, um, the regional health care facility, but also housing. So we'll be able to do some, um, you know, some mixed use housing there where, where you have access right to the metro. Um, and it, it's going to be an economic boom for that entire area. And that's why transit oriented development is so popular. Um, so we, we also hope that we'll do the same thing at the Greenbelt Metro site where we are lure, trying to lure the uh, FBI to come to Prince George's County with jobs um, from the FBI itself, but with those spinoff op uh, economic development opportunities we think are, are going to be great. And then I think an, another huge site for us is National Harbor yeah. and uh, some of the work that's going on uh, down there. I know that uh, Tangier Outlets is right. expected to open and that there have been any number of persons who've applied for employment. Uh, at any one of those outlet stations. So let's talk about your vision for National Harbor. I, you know, National Harbor is, is just great. That is one of our, our southern downtown area. Um, so with uh, National Harbor itself, the downtown area part, Tanger Outlet Mall that's coming in there, um, which is going to be uh, great shopping and will bring people into Prince George's County with a destination resort casino that's going to be in that area too. Um, I want to thank the community college for being willing to step up and help us provide um, readiness uh, for the employment areas for those uh, 
for those job opportunities in, in the county. They're going to be very important to not just service oriented um, uh, positions, but also the hotels, right. um, also the training in in the uh, in the casino air um, entertainment venue. Uh, but that's going to be a great opportunity for our children coming out of our high schools who are starting their career here at Prince George's Community College and being able to decide whether they want to go directly into a job at one of these development sites in Prince George's County or use that skill they've learned here and on the job to go to a four-year institution. Exactly. So, well, you know, I'm excited because generally I've had to do my outlet shopping outside of <laughs> Prince George's right. County. So I can assure you that uh, Tanger Outlets will probably see me more than they might want to and more than I might want to, but I definitely <laughs> plan to be there. Yeah, we'll so, want you, there. <laughs> you know, we, we talked a little too, we, we know that uh, gaming yes. uh, has the possibility of coming to Prince George's County and it's probably stronger than a possibility. Yeah. And I know that uh, you all are in the midst right now or the state is in reviewing applications and making some decisions about that. So your, the, the focus on gaming, what do you expect that to bring to the county? Uh, about $41 million extra revenue a year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're, we're very excited about the fact that it's not just, as I said to folks, it's not just, um, if this was table games and slot machines, I wouldn't be interested in it. But the entertainment aspect of it, at being able to bring high-end shows to Prince George's County that now you have to go to uh, the District of Columbia or other places to see, uh, bringing in high-end retail. Uh, talk about places where I don't want my wife or my mom to go shop. <laughs> but people want that in the county and high-end restaurants. So think about this, it, it, by the time we have the casino built, which I hope will be at National Harbor, I think it's a great location for it. Um, it certainly will be in the county and we're gonna open up Tanger Outlet Mall. We could have a traffic jam in the southern part of county for the first time that I can remember right. since I was a student at Howard University where people were actually coming into Prince George's County, not through Prince George's County, but actually coming in, stopping, to shop and to and to be entertained here in the county and to eat. That has not happened in a long time. And then in, in the few moments that we have remaining, speak to us then about crime. You know, people are very much concerned about crime. You've talked about reduction in the uh, six transforming neighborhoods yeah. uh, initiative that, that you started. But overall, what would you say to people about safety in Prince George's County? You know, this is the safest the county's been in almost 35 years. In fact, you have to go back to when the uh, Washington Redskins were in the Super Bowl to, to see numbers this low. <laughs> That's how far back, but we're just so pleased. Our homicide rate was cut the lowest, one of the lowest in the entire United States. We cut it by 33% last year, and we're on pace to do the same thing this year. Well, that's really great. I know that you've talked a little bit too about, and, and probably at more than just a little bit about the, the, the partnership with Prince George's Community College yeah. and the role that we play certainly in adding to the uh, economic development, uh, increasing the quality of life, providing education and training, along with our other two and four year partners here in Prince George's County. So we've been, we're very excited about that work. We're excited to do more. Our Middle College Academy has received attention uh, from across the state right. and certainly uh, nationally. You know that those young people, will, our first class will graduate in May of oh. 2015 and we're really excited um, to uh, see them walk across yeah. the stage and we know that you'll be with us right. as well as other uh, dignitaries. So what we'd like to do as we move through is to thank you so much for being thank with you. us this morning, uh, County Executive Baker. It's been a great discussion and uh, we want to thank you for joining us on this edition of Conversations.